This video documents the life cycle and rearing of the white-streaked silk moth, Saturnia albofasciata, and continues where the hand pairing and egg laying videos leave off. After mating, the female is placed in a paper grocery bag where she'll lay all 50 to 100 of her eggs overnight. The eggs are then carefully removed from the paper bag and placed into these small glassing envelopes and then into this sealed plastic medicine bottle. It's critical to prevent condensation in this bottle, so a number of layers of paper towels are also included inside. The sealed pill bottle was then stored in a small countertop refrigerator over the winter, from the beginning of November to the beginning of February, at a temperature of about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. After removal from the refrigerator, the eggs were placed into these empty SD card cases and then taped inside a clear CD jewel case for easy observation on the desktop. The eggs were kept at room temperature at roughly 70 degrees Fahrenheit and after 30 days began to hatch. The next step is to transfer these caterpillars onto the host plant. They're very small so this procedure has to be done very carefully. A few of these caterpillars still have their eggshells stuck to them so we're going to carefully remove those using tweezers. The next step will be to transfer these little caterpillars onto the host plant using the same tweezers. In the wild, these eggs will be laid directly onto the live host plant by the female moth. Since these caterpillars were hatched in plastic containers, they have to be transferred to the host plant manually. Ideally, the caterpillars would be allowed to crawl directly from the plastic container onto the plant, but since we're dealing with a hundred or more caterpillars here, it's easier just to transfer them using tweezers. They can be safely picked up by the spines on their back using these special low-force forces. With a little practice, this whole procedure can be done fairly quickly and easily. The host cutting setup is fairly straightforward. It consists of some pick-style florist vials set in some wood blocks with holes drilled in them. It's important that the host plant stem fits tightly in the top of the cap. The caterpillars aren't terribly bright and will crawl down the stem into the water and drown if you let them. The host plant we're using here is Desert Lilac, Ceanothus gregei, and you can see there are quite a few caterpillars using these cuttings already. These particular cuttings were taken from plants that are just starting to bloom and produce new growth, which is just the way the caterpillars like them. Besides providing fresh host cuttings on a regular basis, one of the most important things in raising this species successfully is to keep the caterpillars warm. Temperatures between 65 and 85 degrees are good, and ideally should be kept between 75 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Because we're rearing this species earlier in the year than they would normally be in the wild, we have to provide them with a suitable environment. One simple solution is to turn a cardboard box into an environmental chamber where lighting, temperature, and airflow can be controlled. The front of this box has been cut away and replaced with a clear plastic saran wrap film. Inside is a 13 watt compact fluorescent bulb and a piece of aluminum foil taped to the plastic to prevent it from melting and also to reduce glare. The sides of the box have been cut away and covered with screen to provide airflow. The top vent has an adjustable cover to allow fine adjustment of the temperature inside. A digital thermometer with remote temperature probe allows accurate monitoring of the temperature inside the box. The towel on top of the box helps provide insulation and retain some of the heat generated by the light bulb inside. The compact fluorescent bulb is an ideal light source. It provides intense light and only medium heat, which allows the host plant cuttings to be kept very close to the bulb itself. The caterpillars tend to accumulate on the side of the host plant cuttings nearest the light source, where their black coloration helps them absorb infrared light radiation from the bulb. The transparent water vials allow easy monitoring of the water level for the host plant cuttings. The aluminum foil shield on the front window also helps reflect light and heat back into the box. The light source in the box is on a timer, which is set to turn on at 6 a.m. and off at 10 p.m. These host plant cuttings will be replaced every three to five days, depending upon their condition and consumption by the caterpillars. They will grow to maturity in four to six weeks in this safe, warm environment, free from predators and adverse conditions. 